Grace and peace to all of you with the Well community in Dallas, Texas. I'm Eric Folkerth. I'm senior pastor at Kessler Park United Methodist Church in Dallas, and it's my honor to be sending you this video sermon sermonette this morning uh, during our time of social distancing. I know that it's uh, challenging that uh, you can't all be together and uh, that we can't all be together during this time. Uh, so, uh, Alice, your friend and mine, Alice Zaccarello, asked me to send you this little vi video sermon this morning, and I hope it's meaningful for you. Um, I decided to just come out here to my garden. Um, this is actually here at my house. I'll just show you this for a little bit. I don't know if I can turn the camera. I can't turn the camera around while it's going. Well, my house is just behind us here. And uh, behind me here, here is a beautiful wildflower garden. Let me see if I can make that a little prettier. See the wildflowers blooming right now? Aren't they beautiful? Uh, I want to say more about the wildflowers in just a minute. Uh, but I want to uh, start by reading the scripture. And the scripture I'm going to read today is actually the Easter Sunday uh, scripture for you from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. Hear these words. Early on the first day of the week, when it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the tomb. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent in to look over into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the, one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. When she said this, she turned and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will come and take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them all these things. God always blesses the reading and hearing of God's holy word. My message to you today is that new life can sometimes feel confusing. I think that's one of the most important messages from Easter Sunday. We tend to think of Easter as a big joyful time, and it is. We tend to celebrate Easter most years with a lot of music and, and flowers everywhere and just this really, really big celebration. But the very first Easter Sunday and the very first people who ever heard the good news about Jesus were a little confused by it. They were confused by exactly what was happening. <coughs> Excuse me. Mary doesn't understand who the angels are or why they are there. And when she sees Jesus, she doesn't even recognize Jesus at first. It's very, very confusing to try to figure out everything that is going on there. And yet resurrection has already happened in that moment, hasn't it? Jesus is already resurrected. The good news has already happened. And this paradox reveals something to us, I think, that when we have new life, when we experience new life in our lives, it can sometimes feel confusing. We don't just immediately say, oh, this is new life. Oh, everything is beautiful. Oh, everything is fine now. No, sometimes it's still very confusing for a long time. Sometimes it takes us days or weeks or months to realize exactly uh, the new life that has come to us. Sometimes it's not until we look back. It's not until we get farther down the road and we look back at our life and we say, Oh, new life was happening there. Now I get it. Now I understand it. See? So, new life can be confusing. Mary eventually understood what was happening that day, but new life is subtle sometimes, and it doesn't 
just always come to us in one fell swoop. So I know that many of you are sheltering at home and you're not able to get out in the way that you normally would. And I know that that probably makes you very sad to be able to not see your friends, to, to not go out in public places. We all are feeling this for sure. But what I want to say to you is that this crisis that we're all going through isn't going to last forever. It's going to be over sooner rather than later. And once it's over, we will all be able to be together again. You will be able to get out and back to your normal life. And, and the seeds of that new life, I think, have already been sown. God doesn't cause bad things to happen so that new life and resurrection will happen. That's not the way it works. It's more mysterious than that. It's that there is new life built into the fabric of the universe. Everything, your life, my life, the world itself, speaks to us a message of new life and how life comes from death and how every sadness, every pain, every misery, even in the moment that it's happening, has some sort of kernel, some sort of seed inside of it. And that seed, even in that moment, is getting ready to sprout and grow. You know, there are, um, there are, uh, forest trees, this is actually very true, pine trees, that when the pine cones fall from the forest, uh, they aren't released, they just sit there. The only way they are released, this certain kind of pine tree, is if there's a forest fire. If there's a forest fire, the seeds pop out and then they get into the ground and they grow the next generation of the forest. Isn't that amazing? The seed is in the middle of the destruction or the pain or the death already. That is, what I'm saying is, that is true for everybody and everything. That is true for you and for me, and it is true for our world. And the reason we celebrate Easter in springtime is because we especially see it in things like my garden back here. You see all these amazing flowers? Aren't those remarkable? I'm gonna move out of the way so you can see them again. Aren't those incredible? So my wife and I planted this garden a year ago. And last year it looked kinda okay. It was, it was, you know, there were a few flowers. It was sorta pretty. But this year, my goodness, look at everything. Look at how everything has come out of the ground in ways that just two months ago, just three months ago, uh, back in late February and early March, everything was still very dead. And we thought, oh, I don't think this, uh, we, we, in fact, we didn't even think, we thought most of this stuff was weeds. We didn't realize these were, oh, these are the wildflowers. We thought they were weeds. Nope, they're the wildflowers. So even when we are not sure that new life has started, God has already started new life for you, for me, for all of us. That's the way the world works. That's the way God has set up the world. That's what it means for their, that's what Jesus' story means. This story of death and resurrection is this story. That in every death, there is the sense, the uh, possibility of a new life. So I wanna play you a song. This is a hymn in our tradition, in our United Methodist tradition. Uh, I hope I can step back and this will sound okay. No, I'll step forward. <laughs> I think you'll hear it better this way. You can see that I have a guitar. This song was written by a woman whose own husband was dying of cancer when she wrote it. And I always think of that. When I play this song, because it's, so, it's such a beautiful song, but it's written out of pain. In one of those times before she knew that resurrection was going to happen, she had to just trust in it and believe that it was going to happen. Just like we trust and believe these flowers are going to grow. 
In the bulb there is a flower In the seed an apple tree In cocoons a hidden promise Butterflies will soon be free In the cold and snow of winter There's a spring that waits to be Unrevealed until its season Something God alone can see There's a song in every silence Seeking word and melody There's a dawn in every darkness Bringing hope to you and me From the past will come the future What it holds a mystery Unrevealed until its season Something God alone can see In our end is our beginning In our time infinity In our doubt there is belief in our life, eternity In our death, a resurrection At the last, a victory Unrevealed until its season Something God alone can see So if you are down, if you are depressed, if you are shut in and you're thinking this doesn't feel, it feels like everything's dead and ho hopeless, just know the seeds of your new life have already been sown. The seeds of new hope. The seeds of the time when you will be together with your friends and be able to be out and have have your, your normal life back. Those seeds are already sown right now and they will grow just as surely as all of these wildflowers here grow, okay? Because that's the story of Easter. That's the story of our faith. It is this hope in which we believe. So grace and peace to all of you at the Well community. Keep your heads up. God bless you. And we will see you all soon. Amen.